The attempted assassination is one of the most predictable things to happen in American public life in my lifetime. It is simultaneously one of the most shocking and one of the most predictable. Shocking, but not surprising. Why? Because the temperature has been turned up so high for so long, his political opponents have defined him as literally Hitler. And when you keep saying your political opposition is literally Hitler, who is going to take America into a new dark age, when you say that over and over and over again, you are turning up the temperature. You're turning it up. It's how you get congressional baseball shootings. And it's how you get attempted assassination attempts on Justice Brett Kavanaugh. And it's how you get what happened yesterday in Butler, Pennsylvania. Again, the only person who is responsible for the actual attempted shooting is the shooter. With that said, when you keep turning up the temperature, when you keep saying that America is going to be literally destroyed, this will be the last election, Donald Trump is the worst person who has ever lived and he must be stopped. Someone is going to take that seriously and think to themselves, shouldn't I do something to stop Hitler? Shouldn't I? This is typical, framing the narrative to make it look as though Christians who are serious about living what they consider to be a Christian life and to spread the message of the gospel are a threat. The problem is the media has gotten by with lying to the public about lots of things for so long and they have not been called out for it by Christians themselves in general. So now, targeting Christians and labeling them as a threat is becoming easier and easier. So they're becoming bolder and bolder. And what is the public supposed to do about this threat exactly? That hasn't yet been clarified, but it will be. This is exactly how propaganda has been used in history to stigmatize and ultimately abolish a group of people. Slow propaganda that is very subtle at first and then gets bolder and bolder as it is not opposed. They literally took a graphic from The Handmaid's Tale and they tweeted it out of women in the red habit and the, and the nun's hat underneath the Washington Monument turned into a cross and Biden-Harris headquarters tweeted out 4th of July under Trump's Project 2025. How many times can you say that your political opponent is going to impose a fascist dictatorship before somebody takes you seriously? How many times? This sort of rhetoric raises the temperature. It, raises, it, it increases the possibility of free radicals. This has always been true. I first read The Handmaid's Tale in college. I was like, oh, this, this is my life. This statement is again suggesting that women are oppressed and abused within IBLP. It's really a feminist narrative that women who consider their role as mother and to be a part of what they were designed to do is oppressive. And it's using an exaggerated fictional story to suggest it. Here's an ad that Joe Biden just put out. And again, it is just chock filled with lies and the impression that Donald Trump is a racist, bigoted dictator would be. Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Of course I hate these people. Donald Trump disrespecting black folk is nothing new. He was sued for refusing to rent his apartments to black families and called for the execution of five innocent black and brown teenagers. And it's more than anger, it's hatred. It's why Trump stood with violent white supremacists, warned of a bloodbath if he loses the next election, and if he's president again, vowed to be a dictator who wants revenge on his enemies. Now, who do you think that is? Of course I hate these people. Okay, that ad came out like three days ago. Okay, that ad says that he sides with white supremacists, a lie. It says that he hates black people, a lie. It says that he will be a dictator who unleashes a bloodbath if he loses, a lie. All of those are lies. And they were promulgated for a political purpose by Joe Biden and by his team. What? 
Gothard was selling was sort of this mythical idea of returning to a time in which things were better, but better for who? You know, it wasn't better for the women who were being abused by their husbands and it wasn't getting reported. It wasn't better for black people who didn't have the same rights as white people. It really was better for white Protestants is what was meant by that. This is a slanderous statement because Joshua Pease here is suggesting that because some of the teachings of IBLP correlated with some conservative ideas and things from the past, Therefore, Gothard is a white, racist bigot who believes women should have no rights and black people should sit at the back of the bus. That is an obvious piece of propaganda, a complete fabrication, and an absolute absurdity to suggest that. With Brown versus the Board of Education 1954, the government starts insisting on the desegregation of schools. For two days, white crowds gathered at the school. White evangelical Christians are saying, we don't want our kids to be a part of the public school system anymore. A part of the homeschooling movement is in response to that. What made Gothard so effective is that he was able to realize that there is a way to dovetail all these things he's teaching that would also capture the momentum of people who are wanting to say, like, I want to take back control over their kids' education. Out of that, the Advanced Training Institute is born. This clip was a little longer, but it was important that you see how Joshua Pease is weaving in the idea of racism and homeschooling together, and then saying, out of that, the Advanced Training Institute is born. So in other words, homeschool families who participate in IBLP, who participate in the ATI program, or even homeschoolers generally, are racist. And that's why they do not want their children in public education. That is the false narrative being created here. This is slandering homeschool families generally, but especially those who chose to use the ATI program, which of course includes the Duggar family. Six days ago, the New Republic put out this image on their cover. The New Republic used to be a fairly serious left liberal publication. Now it has turned into Slate.com, except for even more radical people. The cover, for those who can't see it, says the New Republic, American fascism, in sort of the old style German Hitler font, American fascism, what it would look like. And it is a picture of Donald Trump's face merged with the face of Adolf Hitler, with the Hitler mustache and everything. That was the New Republic six days ago, six days ago. Here is a montage of members of the media stating over and over that Donald Trump is a would-be dictator, a would-be Hitler, orange Hitler. They were saying this for years. Let's deal with Hitler, okay? I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that. I mean, that is Mussolini Hitler-like language. Trump's affinity for Hitler was always covered under an umbrella of his stupidity. Echoing Hitler's words. Listen to this. Well, Hitler was duly elected. That's right. While echoing the hateful rhetoric of Adolf Hitler. I refuse to live under Donald Trump's reign again. I refuse to risk our democracy. What would a second Trump term in the White House mean for the rule of law in our country? It would be the end of democracy. Anybody that votes Republican and doesn't understand you are voting for the end of democracy. That's the kind of language Hitler used in Mein Kampf. About vermin and, and Hitler and Mussolini. That's a horrifying clip. That's a fascist clip. You're just going full on Hitler. If Trump wins, um, it would be the end of democracy in the United States. This was the campaign. This is the campaign. When you say that over and over and over, while condemning Donald Trump's rhetoric, we can all see what you're doing, and it has real consequences. But this notion that the radical left-wing rhetoric that has been mainstreamed by the Democratic Party, the ad after ad, the picture after picture of Donald Trump as existential threat to America. There will be no more elections. Donald Trump will be a dictator. You might have all your friends killed. All your rights will be taken away. You'll be shipped off on boxcars. That sort of talk is unbelievably dangerous. Rhetoric does have consequences. When you keep raising the temperature, you're doing something deeply wrong. And when you're lying to do it, you're doing something deeply evil. And the left has been doing something both deeply wrong and deeply evil here. That is the reality of the situation. As long as we stay silent or allow this kind of propaganda to go unanswered, it will continue and grow. And that's what's been happening. And it is why season two of Shiny Happy People is in the works right now. It is in the process of filming. 
So we can assume that means another four full episodes of lies and misrepresentations is coming. I hope those watching will understand that staying silent has to end if we want the public to realize they are being fed anti-Christian propaganda. And the only way to make that happen is to tell the truth about what they are presenting. Many Christians find this scary. They know the truth of all this, but are afraid because, as a writer named Selwyn Duke once said, the further society drifts from the truth, the more they hate those who speak it. It's obvious this channel has been shadow banned, and so it will not spread as quickly or as widely as the opposition. Clearly, those who own and manage media platforms have set their algorithms to favor the other side. In addition to that advantage, in this case, the opposition has Amazon, one of the largest companies in the world, financially backing them. Christians are not going to get the same play in social media as the opposition. Our message will be squelched. That's just a fact. My little voice is a tiny speck on the horizon of social media influence. But the number of voices or supporters or likes or clicks or views does not determine what is true. Truth stands alone, regardless of the number of people who see it, hear it, or believe it. But if you want to help, you can find out how in the description below. Thank you for watching and please remember to like, share, and subscribe.